Jamie. Hey. This is Jamie again. We've got a few things happening today. It's Boxing Day, so that means sales are on. And we're going down to Super Cheap Auto to get... I don't even know what we need to get. We'll probably just get something real dumb that we don't actually need, just because we can, because there's a sale. Oh, fuck. And then we're going to get food. And then we're going to put my, my gauge in, finally. Yeah. We've had it for like months. Wait, don't you have a boost tea as well? I do. I do have a boost tea. And we can wind that up. Oh, look. Stasia with Weds, but new Stasia with the Basrius and mine's going to be Cran uh, LXZs and it's not going to be an M35. Shopping trip complete. I got um, heat shrink for obvious reasons because we're doing wiring. Got vac hose for possibly the boost tea we might be putting that in today. And then vac hose for the gauge, two packs of tea and cable ties. Um. <laughs> Skids <laughs> in the middle of Kabbalah. DK, is that you? Brian, is that you? <laughs> Brian, should we do skids in the industrial estate? I think we should. All right, we'll get sushi and then we'll do skids. We just finished sushi. Sushi train's back there. And um, in order to keep this video interesting, it's just started pissing down rain. Oh, so yes. we're gonna go do skids. We're in Mexico. Oh, in, in Mexico, yeah. <laughs> It's just a burnout. <laughs> One wheel peel. Wait, where the fuck is the teardrop that was It's the next here? street up. Fuck. Do it, Yui. Jesus, you are sketchy. <laughs> Skids. We almost went into a tree that time. Oh no! Spun out! I just got the gun. <laughs> <laughs> this is fucking sketchy driving. Yeah, now. this is too sketchy. It's too light in the rear. At least no one's working at the garlic bread factory. Fucking slippery. It's raining. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, let's go home. That was fun. What time is it? Can't even see. It's 3.50 and we haven't done anything. And it's gonna get really dark soon. Oh, that was all right. It's so oh, here's a Volvo dark. workshop. Right there. That's the Volvo workshop. Dude, I love El Grands. They look so cool. I want one. So we're back home after skids in Mexico. Flew back home. Took a few days up. And yeah, we've got the gazebo set up because it's raining. So this time we were prepared and we're actually still going to be able to work on my car. And we're just trying to find out where to mount my sensor for my gauge. That's where we decided to mount it. So it's nice and tucked away. We just used a little bolt through an existing hole that was there and just yeah, popped it right there. It's going to look nice and neat and clean. Like me. But less homo. <laughs> Alright, now we're just using a coat hanger wire to poke through the grommet down there to find where it comes out so we know where to get the power wire from that goes to the controller. This is the controller here. This goes inside your cabin. Um, it's got all the things to set, um, all the settings for your gauges. Your sensor goes straight into the back of that in here. Then you've got your gauge which plugs into the back as well into the boost section and then goes up to your dash from the controller and then this is the power wire that I had to order off RHD Japan the one that it came with was for a different style of defi gauge and um, it didn't actually fit in the controller so it's basically got a power auxiliary and ground and what was the other one power auxiliary ground like and ignition. oh yeah that's right battery power ignition auxiliary and ground. The auxiliary you um, wire into your headlights so when you turn your headlights on it dims. Um, do we really need that? Nah, we'll put it in there. We're making progress. 
As you can see, that coat hanger is moving, and it's not me moving it. That's Jamie moving it, so he's obviously got his hand on the on the wire. So now we just got to poke the power wire through it. All right, let's do that. <laughs> this is the struggle to get out. <laughs> All right, let's do it. Made this spear-like contraption. We've taped the power wire and the head to the coat hanger to try poke it back through it, the the grommet again to try and get it into the cabin. So hopefully this works. You've never really been good at fitting it in, have you? I have to kind of just jam it in there, I guess. They're always too tight. <laughs> Those holes never really for what I want to do with it. Meant for stuff coming out, not going back in. Yeah, that's am I right? Big things going out, not little things going in. <laughs> I think I'm at the cable now. Oh, there we go. Oh, no. Did you just pull it off? The cable came off. Put me in the bin. And like so it's actually gone part the way through the grommet, but then it came off the coat hanger. You can see like all the sticky residue from the this dicky tape, the electrical tape. So it's actually come halfway through, so now Jamie's just gonna get in there and pull it the rest of the way through. It's like tickling a little bum hole. <laughs> <laughs> There's a little willy. <laughs> <laughs> that should be it. Yeah, that's it, that's it, keep pulling. Don't pull too much so that we still have enough um, room to like tuck it before you pull it all through. There's the power wire. We made it. So we're pulling apart the dash to try and get, um, so we can put the wire for the gauge up through here. We should probably test it first before tucking in the wire. You're even gonna break it or? Yeah, that's that's probably the idea, I mean. You're the one that took it off last Actually, time. Actually, I'm pretty sure this comes out first. Yeah, see, it's coming out. I'm so scared. Like, this is obviously popping out, like, and coming out, yeah. you can tell. I'm just a little pussy bitch. Finally got the air vents out, I was right, you do have to get the air vents out first before getting the center out. So now we gotta take these two bolts off and this face just pops off, that's right. I remember now. So, um, yeah, the quality may have changed a little bit. My settings on my filming were wrong because I haven't messed around with them for a while. 12 volts, nice. And the car's turned, like, are the keys even in the ignition? No. So that's, that's 12 volts constant then? So we're now gonna splice our 12 volts constant into their 12 volts constant. Which one's 12 volts? This, oh, Jesus. <laughs> Did you get zapped? What the hell? <laughs> Did you get zapped? Man, this is sketchy <laughs> business. I Look told at you. this aftermarket wiring done by whoever owned the car before I did. You've got your electrical tape, so we'll make yeah. sure it's all legit before finishing up. This is sketchy, man. What is that? And look at this, ready? It doesn't even go to anything. What do you mean? Anyway, we're just gonna figure this wiring out. I'll, I'll pick this up. It's a bit hard to do, so I'll pick this up when we've sorted we out the like wiring. need like a third person. Ready? Ah, yes! It works. So that's the startup thing. Dude, yes! And then we must, and then that one goes on. It works! Hell yeah! Oh, I'm so stoked. We did something yeah, right. He's now testing where the ignition is. We've already got the power wire wired into a constant 12 volt. It looks like it's already reading something. All right, so that one is an ignition wire. Um, now we're gonna wire the other two wires into the ignition. And then we've just gotta wire the ground into the ground. If you're watching this, Jamie's girlfriend, it is, it is 7.48 and he is still at my house wiring up my gauge. He's a good boy, he wouldn't lie. Imagine this is actually all back together and we're wired up. And we're like, okay, we're just about to race down the highway. All right, now let's um, tuck all this wiring. Halfway back in here, uh, we got the wires semi-tucked. We just stuck the control box on, as you can see there, and we're just gonna tuck the wires back up in there, put everything back together, sort out where the gauge needs to go, and then sort out its wire, and then we should be good. So we've almost finished the install of the DEFI. Literally everything's back together, all wires are tucked. I just need to stick down the gauge, um, which I'll do in a minute. But first, we're going to do a boosty install. We're putting in a T-piece for the gauge first and then we're putting in the boosty. 
So for the gauge boost here, what we've done is we've zip tied it along the ABS lines along the back so that it stays up away from the engine and doesn't heat up or anything. Not, not that it needs to not heat up, but anyway. And then we've just got this last length here at the end. So we're basically just going to cut a little bit and just boost it in like right there next to the factory line. So it looks pretty much factory. So just snip this way here. Um, this is where the stock boost gauge comes in, but the stock boost gauge is absolutely trash and doesn't do anything. So that's why we got a defy. Just got to push your little vac T nipple thingy in there and there. I wish we got black ones. It would have made it way better. I don't think they have black ones. Well, they can suck me. So you put it in there. And then what you want to do is zip tie that side and that side to make sure this stays in. Push that in there. That's how you put in your boost gauge. That's actually sick. Let me tell you a dark tale about the one time that I lowered my car and absolutely destroyed every part of my car. I put my coilovers in. And then I heard a grinding noise coming from the rear wheels. Turns out my, real, my wheels were actually hitting my coilovers. That's it. That's the story. That's really scary. So my battery's getting pretty low quickly, but explain what, um, what we're taking off, Jamie. Um, this is like the factory boost solenoid thing. I'm just going to take it off and put a boost to you there. Yeah, basically. And then there's one, there's one pipe down there that we have to block off. Oh yeah, that goes before the turbo. <laughs> this isn't coming off. You're just a pussy. So yeah, that's like your boost solenoid or whatever. Um, don't need that. Alright, so this one goes just before the turbo. Um, it was like a bleed off line for the other one. But since we don't want any leaks, we're going to have to put a screw in there. And then when we put the front mount on, later down the track. Because I have a front mount. I may not have shown it in another video, but I have one. It's over there. So on top of taking off your um, boost solenoid, you're going to want to take off this um, like bit of metal piping here. The only two pipes you need is this one here and this one down here. This is the one you need to get rid of. So basically we've got our new 6mm vac hose that comes off your turbo intercooler piping there and that comes off your wastegate manifold and we just put them on, snipped it in half. Now we're going to choose where the boost T goes and then we're just going to like zip tie it to wherever it needs to go. So it's in. Right now, we're just going to leave it hanging like down in this little pocket here so that we can do a test drive and like change the settings when we need to. We put a screw in the end of that one there. I feel like we're in a race car now. So the gauge works. But the boost here unfortunately does not work. So we don't know what's wrong with the boost here. No matter if you put it down or put it up, it's still sitting at 8 psi. We want like maybe 12 or 14 at maximum. It's just one that the one that Matt gave me. So it could just be that it's not working properly. Yeah, that's it. That's how to install a defi and a boost T, even though it's one that's not working. Looks so good. So yeah, the install of the Defi went like perfectly, it went so well. It looks really good, it's really clean, you can't tell in the engine bay that anything's been done and then in um, the interior there's only like a tiny bit of wire and the gauge, so it looks really good. I'm really stoked on that. I'm only kind of annoyed that the boost here didn't actually work out. Um, it doesn't work at all. It doesn't change no matter how much you put the pressure up or down. So we're thinking that the boost team might be fried because I did get it second hand from Matt as you can see in my coil over install video. Uh, but that's all good, I'll just get a new one or I may possibly be getting an electronic boost controller as well. So we'll see how that goes. So like the comment, subscribe. Up. I really appreciate it if you guys liked the video um, and commented on it. And if you really do enjoy these types of videos that I'm making, um, then subscribe. All right, see you guys. Put the interior in. And you got a rear left print mat. Oh yeah, and put the interior in. It didn't have interior or back seat yeah, before. From the first video, I'd see that had no interior. That's right. Yeah, lot's been done.
Man, this thing's so pretty. There's so many nice cars in this video today. Yeah, yeah. We've got the 260, the Supra, the RX-7. But back to the RX-7, because you have not seen that yet. 